This presentation is about interference theory of forgetting. So what is interference? If forgetting is not a function of passage of time, then how does it happen? So this theory, interference theory, assumes that memory can be disrupted or it can be interfered by the previously learned information or the future learned information. Thus, during encoding information in long-term memory, the memory is either distorted or disrupted proactively or retroactively. The proactive interference and retroactive interference will be learned in this presentation later. So, according to this theory, interference is the reasons of forgetting in long-term memory or in short-term memory, Interference is described as small form of distractions like uh, if we use drilling machine or any high sounding machine outside the classroom, it may distract the students and it may interfere with their studies. Here is a small example that will give you a brief about the interference theory which discusses about the proactive interference and retroactive interference. So the example is, what if a student studied two languages? He first learned French language and then he learned Spanish language. So according to this theory, interference can occur in two directions. Like when Spanish exam happened, the French information which was studied before may proactively interfere with the recall of the newly acquired Spanish language. And the case could be vice versa, like when he gave the exam of the French language, the newly acquired Spanish language might retroactively interfere with the recall of the former one. So in this slide, there is a diagrammatic representation of proactive interference and retroactive interference. So till now, you all must have got the idea of what is proactive interference. So proactive interference or proactive inhibition is the tendency for the older or previously learned material to interfere with the learning of the new or the subsequent material. So in the earlier example where the student learned two languages, first he learned French language and then he learned Spanish language. If the French language interfere with the acquisition of the Spanish language, then proactive interference has happened. We all are familiar with the proactive interference or inhibition in our daily life. Like when we all get that new phone number, we often find it difficult to learn it. It is because the people often find themselves remembering their old phone numbers or some of its digits instead of the new one. So like this, there are many examples in our daily life that falls in the category of proactive interference or proactive inhibition. This is another diagrammatic representation of retroactive interference and proactive interference. So what is retroactive interference? It is just the opposite of proactive interference. In this, the new information or the newer information interferes with the recall or retrieval of the older information. This also happens in our daily life, like whenever we learn anything which is new or difficult, it often makes us forget the older information. Like in this slide, we have given the example of computer language. Say we have learned Java language recently and earlier we learned C++. So the Java language makes us forget the previously learned information that is the C++ language. If this happens, then there are the effects of retroactive inhibition. So in order to explain the role of interference in forgetting, Postman did a lab experiment. In 1960, he wanted to investigate whether retroactive interference affects our learning or not. In order to do this, he divided the participants in two groups. One was the experimental group and the other was the controlled group. Both groups 
were to remember a list of paired words like cat, tree, book, tractor, etc. But the experimental group was given an additional list of pair words. In this, the second word of the same pair was changed. Like earlier, it was cat tree. It was changed to cat glass. The experimental group was to learn both the list of words. So, what in this experiment Postman found out was that the controlled group was more accurate and the experimental group was lacking. And the lacking of this experimental group can be explained with the retroactive interference point of view. Like the learning items in the second list might interfere with the participant's ability to recall the list which was given earlier. So this is how interference theory was explained through a scientific and a more systematic manner where the interference which was retroactive was explained through a lab experiment. Interference theory is quite relatable and is understandable. There are many reasons that make it more applicable but there are many that makes it less applicable. Interference in one form or the other do comes out as the culprit when we forgot from long term memory and forgetting in long term memory can be explained through this theory. But there are many reasons that makes it less applicable. For example, it tells us very less about the cognitive processes that are involved in forgetting. There is no one such reason that can explain forgetting in long term memory. There are multiple reasons or there could be many reasons that may lead to forgetting in long term memory. Majority of the researches that were carried out to explain this theory were done in labs which leads to less external and ecological validity. This makes it less generic and the results that were found out cannot be generalized. Though interference theory plays a role in forgetting but how much forgetting can be attributed to the interference is still a question. So let's see how much we have learned in this presentation. The first question is which type of interference explain the forgetting of new information due to the previous one. So the forgetting of new information is better explained in proactive interference. Question number two is in case of short term memory interference can be explained as so in this presentation we have learned that in short term memory the interference could be explained as distractions or disruptions. Question number three is Shreyas got a new cell phone contact number recently. While giving his new contact number to his friends, he got confused with the digits of his previous contact number. So what type of interference do you think it is? So this type of example best suits with retroactive interference. So the answer to this question is retroactive interference. 